My name is Kathy Wu, and my title here at the health department is I am actually a public health nutritionist, but my credentials are a registered licensed dietitian. Well, a registered dietitian is a person who actually has gone through a four-year accredited program at a university that actually has the dietitian program. It's very scripted out and it doesn't have much variation, so you meet all the requirements. Then you have to do a year-long internship at an accredited university uh, that encompasses all kinds of aspects of nutrition. Um, after that, you have to sit for the national exam and pass the exam, and then you have to maintain the continuing education units that are pretty stringent for dietitians so that you're always using the most accurate information and science-based information and it really sets the dietitian apart from people who just claim to be say a nutritionist because they read a couple of books or they have an interest in nutrition as well. I think it makes a difference when you're actually working with clients with some sort of disease management requirements versus just generally trying to eat better as an individual. Well, my day-to-day -day here in the health department is a lot of looking at public health from a dietitian standpoint. So I actually am teaching classes in uh, uh, pre-diabetes, diabetes management. Um, I'm actually encouraging physical activity, which is part of the whole picture for healthy eating. I see individual clients that are scheduled in uh, that have specific requirements from their physicians. It could be diabetes, it could be hypertension. It can be many things that they are looking for, some sort of scientific or uh, usable information to modify their diets to manage their disease better so that they have a better quality of life. I think it always does because if you look at the statistics on people uh, moving forward and developing chronic diseases, it's on such an upward spiral. So if we could get people to pay attention to it just on the basic level of day to day, get our kids to follow, have our families doing it, perhaps we could make some momentum into changing the level of chronic disease we have in our communities. The other thing is just general health and well-being. You know, we're all talking about quality of life and eating better, I can't find anybody that would deny they don't feel better when they eat better. We all feel feel that little bit of sluggishness when we're eating more high fat foods, um, when we're overeating and we can't move. But when you meet people who are eating well, working out, or just taking walks every day, they have a different perspective on life. So I think general nutrition is got to be just like getting up and taking a shower, brushing your teeth, what you're going to wear that day. It should be at the top of the ladder of importance for most people because of the quality of life they'll achieve with it. But I'm a strong proponent of using frozen vegetables for a lot of things because they've been picked at peak ripeness. They have all the nutrition in them compared to things that are in the winter show up in our produce markets that come from a far away location and have been ripened on the way here. They haven't sort of taken all the nutrients from the ground that they could. So you can take frozen vegetables. They make them easily microwavable. Once you microwave them, you throw them in a pan with some chicken, you're good for go. You don't have to do a whole lot with them and you can stay within your budget. If you're down to canned vegetables because that's what you're going to use or canned chicken, so be it. It. You just take that, you rinse them off, you learn how to go with what you can afford. I think that's a great point because I think when we talk about healthy eating, people think it costs a lot because healthy eating means we're buying the most expensive things. I spend a lot of time with people in the community showing them how they can still eat healthy and stay within their budget as well. A good grocery store tour is good for anybody because you can kind of sort of edge them in to see you could use this, you can use that so that they don't feel like they have to spend the amount. And if you have a children at home and you're on a, a single income, it, you're right, it does get costly to do some of those maybe, as you call it, those, those high fluten recipes that people like. <laughs> Let's see, my top one would be to select foods from all the food groups every day. Don't leave a food group out. Find something that fits into that category. Um, the second thing would be portion control. Really think about how much you need, how much you're going to cook, because that ties into what's good for you in your budget and how to shop and prepare. And my third one was to be creative, to think outside the box of your normal everyday eating so that you're willing to try new foods to expand your menu options.
They can call us right here at the health department and I think you can put the number in at the end and we have a website. Uh, we, they can access our videos that we've done on healthy cooking. We've done some exercise videos. We've toured local parks. So there's lots of ways to kind of, and you know, I don't think anybody's afraid to Google a question, but I think the thing to make sure people do is make sure they're looking at a reliable source for the answer. Fish. Fish. The Worcester County Health Department provides medical nutrition therapy to all eligible Worcester County residents with a diagnosis of type 1 or type 2 diabetes. This service provides nutrition counseling by a registered licensed dietitian nutritionist. The registered dietitian and client discuss and determine optimal goals, a workable care plan, and appropriate interventions to develop and implement behavior and lifestyle changes as related to the nutrition problem and medical condition or disease. Call 410-632-0056 if you have any more questions.